A few months ago, we've discussed the launch of the ESAS Euclid Telescope, the incredible new telescope designed specifically to answer the biggest mysteries of the universe. It's going to be studying what's known as the dark universe, or basically dark energy and dark matter. And so in that video from just a few months ago, which as always you can find in the description, we've discussed how the telescope is going to be doing all of this, why it's a sort of important mission, and why it has a chance to completely transform our entire understanding of cosmology in the next six years. But just a few hours ago, the telescope officially began its mission. The researchers released five separate images from various distances away from planet Earth, showcasing how extremely powerful this telescope is, and showing us its abilities, discovering a few things in the process. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton, let's discuss Euclid Telescope once again, talk about these five pictures, and of course talk about some of these discoveries. Although at the moment this is still very very preliminary. Anyway, to start I actually just wanted to once again mention why this telescope is so powerful. First of all, the way it functions is essentially by scanning the sky just once, and while it's doing this, it's able to directly collect a tremendous amount of information about every single object it looks at. And that's because it actually observes everything in several different frequencies, specifically in different frequencies of visible light and near-infrared light. And while doing this, by just taking a look at the object for a little bit, it's able to produce a super sharp visible image over a very large portion of the night skies at the same time. And that's because it uses a wide-angle camera, as opposed to other telescopes, such as for example the iconic Hubble telescope, which normally have much higher resolution and are able to zoom in much more, but do not have an ability to see everything all at once. And so here the point is going to be not to study distant invisible galaxies or objects that are extremely far away from us, but instead to try to study almost everything all at once, with the main focus being various cosmic structures and various galaxies up to the redshift of about 2 or essentially looking back in time approximately 10 billion years. And then by measuring the redshift of various galaxies and using the phenomenon known as gravitational lensing, it's going to try to assess the amount of dark matter in a lot of parts of the universe, as well as calculate the expansion rate of the universe by comparing the shapes of various galaxies with the redshift. You can learn a little bit more about this from one of the videos in the description, but in essence it's just going to focus on improving our accuracy and most importantly on collecting a huge amount of data from approximately 10 billion different objects. Yeah, that's 10 billion. Eventually allowing us to create the largest three-dimensional map of the universe up to the redshift of 2. Hopefully discovering a lot of mysteries about dark matter and dark energy in the process, and potentially discovering a lot of other mysteries as well. But right now this telescope is right here in the L2 Lagrange point, sharing its orbit with the Gaia telescope and with the James Webb. So we basically now have three active telescopes in this particular location, all doing absolutely incredible science. And though the early images we received a few months ago were basically just testing if everything works, and it seems to work just fine, the new images that were just released show us how extremely powerful this telescope really is. And so let's briefly discuss these images. The thing is, it's nothing that you didn't know before, but it just looks so much better. And let's start with this. Now this is a crazy image, there's just so much stuff going on here, and as you can probably tell from the image, this is essentially a galactic cluster. And specifically this is known as the Perseus Cluster, approximately 240 million light years away from us, very likely containing thousands of galaxies. Essentially representing one of these many mini clusters forming a much larger supercluster in our vicinity, in this case containing roughly around a thousand galaxies. But just as a comparison, Here's roughly what it looks like with a regular telescope from right here on planet Earth. So yeah, definitely very different. But based on observations in the X-rays, we know there is so much going on in this cluster, because that's exactly what you can see right here. This is a combination of visible light, ultraviolet, and of course X-rays. And so getting a better picture of this cluster was of course important. And just look at how much stuff there is here. Now I'm gonna try to zoom in a little bit. But essentially, by taking this image, the science has discovered hundreds of thousands of galaxies behind it that we've never seen ever before. And some of them are as far away as redshift of 2. Basically, some of them are 10 billion years old. And what made this particular image at first a little bit unusual is that there was an unusual detection of extra low light coming from the cluster's vicinity, not from the cluster itself. 
And it was because of this image, it was then discovered that the source of this light seems to be various leftovers from collisions between various galaxies in the cluster itself. And more specifically, from a lot of stars in the intergalactic space that potentially got stuck there for some unknown reasons, with the first explanation that the scientists provided basically being dark matter. There is a possibility that some of these stars essentially got trapped by various dark matter clumps, preventing them from re-entering various galaxies. Now this is just a preliminary explanation and obviously there's no evidence for any of this, but it was still an intriguing discovery. Right now it's still unclear where a lot of this extra light is sort of coming from. The next image is this, a spiral galaxy, specifically a galaxy known as IC342, also sometimes known as the hidden galaxy, mostly because of its location behind the galactic equator of the Milky Way, so basically it's a little bit difficult to see it. And though we did actually have some really good pictures of this galaxy before, it looks like now we have an even better image, way more detailed, presenting a lot more hidden objects, and most importantly, all of this was just captured in one hour. By looking at this location for a single hour, Euclid was able to produce this, and that is just mind-blowing, making this the first ever space telescope that's able to capture an entire galaxy so quickly and produce such incredible results. And though there are not a lot of discoveries coming from this just yet, there are definitely a lot of mysteries. This galaxy is about 11 million light years away from us, and as you can see this is a large spiral galaxy, but unlike other spiral galaxies, it surprisingly does not have a lot of satellites. And so the mystery of this galaxy and how it evolved, and why it seems to be predominantly alone with just one single satellite known to us, is one of the questions the scientists are going to try to answer. But it also took a picture of a much less developed galaxy, taking a very beautiful picture of an irregular galaxy known as NGC 6822. Here's how this image compares to the previous one from the extremely powerful La Silla Observatory in Chile. And so this galaxy that's about one and a half million light years away from us is very similar to Small Magellanic Cloud both in size and in composition, essentially representing a kind of a primordial galaxy with a lot of material that we normally find in early universe and not a lot of star formation either. And this super accurate image shows us features we've never seen before. I'm sure it's going to be explained later on when the studies come out, but even from previous observations, we know that there are some signs of star formation, and specifically ancient star formation, that seems to have happened about 4 billion years ago. And intriguingly, some of the observations from its motion in the night skies suggest that it might have actually passed not so far away from the Milky Way at this time, implying that maybe just maybe, it's actually the Milky Way that suddenly caused a star formation burst inside this galaxy. Now because it's only 1.6 million light years away from us, it's definitely possible. And so trying to figure out if there was any mixture of material, or if maybe some stars were exchanged in the process, is of course going to be super exciting for some of the future studies. At the moment though, we just get this ridiculously beautiful, very detailed image. And then we also got two images much much closer to home. The first one is of an object about 8,000 light years away, and this is a collection of hundreds of thousands of different stars. This is the second closest globular cluster. Here's actually a comparison of the same image taken by the Hubble. So just look at the difference, absolutely insane. And what makes this cluster a little bit unusual is first of all that it's kind of compact, but second of all is that it seems to have a lot of mass right in the center. And at first it was believed to be maybe black holes, possibly even a large black hole. But then the simulations and a lot of observations reveal that it's very likely hundreds and possibly even thousands of very compact white dwarfs all kind of bundled right in the middle, making this one of the stranger clusters out there, but something we expect from an object so ancient. It's about 13.6 billion years old, very likely one of the first global clusters to appear in the Milky Way. And now we have this new beautiful image that beats the image from Hubble by a mile. Not to mention that once again all of this took almost no time, and in this case the entire cluster was once again observed as the entire object, producing the most accurate observation ever. But once again revealing maybe one surprise. It looks like, for some reason, this cluster does not seem to have a lot of trailing stars. All of the stars are kind of concentrated around the center and all seem to move as basically one object. And to dark matter scientists this once again suggests that maybe there is some kind of a dark matter mystery involved here as well. It's not clear what's happening here just yet, but something is definitely happening. And the last image was the one closest to planet Earth, the famous Horsehead Nebula approximately 1400 light years away from us. This is of course inside the Orion Nebula, 
Here's how this compares to the image from Hubble. And here we basically have dark clouds in front of very bright ultraviolet radiation coming from Sigma Orionis, one of the stars nearby. And though by itself this telescope is not actually meant to study nebula, and the James Webb Space Telescope is definitely much better for that, even here it was able to impress. All of this once again just took one hour, and all of this uncovered a lot of objects we've possibly never seen before. Scientists are actually hoping that there are quite a lot of Jupiter-sized planets here, or maybe a lot of baby stars we've never seen before, but at the moment we don't really know which ones are new and which ones have been studied before. I'm sure the studies in the next few weeks will tell us more. And so honestly, all in all, when you look at these pictures comparing them to the originals, it becomes pretty clear that this is an incredible machine. And just like the James Webb, it's going to be revealing the universe in a way we've never seen it before, by essentially providing these super sharp images with thousands and millions of new objects we've never seen before, and more importantly, creating the biggest three-dimensional map of the universe we've ever had. But also eventually helping us figure out what exactly is happening with dark matter, dark energy, and most likely solve other mysteries as well. And all of this within the next six years. Because at the moment, that's essentially the mission plan for this telescope. In the next six years, it's going to collect enough data to create the largest map. And I guess after seeing these images, I actually cannot wait. As a matter of fact, I can't wait to see even more images, because this so far was definitely better than I expected. Way better. And so we'll definitely come back and talk more about this telescope and its new discoveries once the papers start coming out, once we get even more images from various objects, and once the scientists start processing all of this data. On that note, check out some of the previous videos in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.